Conductors and Insulators, Kirkwood School District, 6th grade science. I'm Dr. McGee. This is Mr. Manwaring, and, and we're, we're going to talk about conductors and insulators. That's what we're going to do. That's, conductors that's right, we're and gonna, insulators. That's Our right. goal today, we want you to be able to identify them, okay? Now, identifying them is a pretty easy part, okay? But knowing why they do what they do, that's a little bit more complicated. That's so right. we're going to get into that. What is resistance? Well, we've talked about it many times throughout our videos here, but basically it's the how difficult it is for electrons to flow through an object. So what's going on in this picture? Well, you got a banana here. You got a battery, super mm -hmm. cool looking battery. And then right. you got the, some wires and a bulb. So you have all the necessary components for a circuit. The problem is you're trying to make the electrons flow through a banana. And bananas don't <laughs> let electrons go very easily. Not good. Nope. nope. So there's four factors that determine resistance. Extremely important information. Very important. First of all. Like you might want to write this down. Kind I'm of saying, important. like I would write this down. Like I definitely write this write down. Write this down. Should we write this down? Probably write it down. Okay. First, the material you use. Obviously, we know some things are better uh, conductors or insulators than others. Okay? Yeah, the length of that material. The electricity has to flow through. So the longer the, electric the elect electrons have to flow, okay, the more resistance it's going to have. That's Think right. about it as the difference between running a sprint or running uh, a marathon. Okay? How thick the wire Does is. Does that mean like short and far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Short. Mm -hmm. Farthest. Right, okay, because okay. not everybody knows what that is. So. Okay. Gotcha. So, a diameter of a wire. So, for example, if I had a really large hallway to walk through, a little easier. If I had to crawl through a tunnel, that's going to increase the resistance. It's a lot more difficult to go through a small space than a bigger space. That's right. And then the temperature of that material, because actually, um, the higher the temperature, that's going to play a part in the resistance of your circuit. Yeah, all right. It. All right. So reducing the resistance does what to the current? If you reduce the resistance, right? If you make the resistance go down, you increase the current. It's a inverse relationship. Okay? It's a very difficult thing to talk about. So if we reduce the resistance, reduce, you increase the amount of electrons that flow through there. The path of least resistance. Electricity will always take the easiest path possible. That's very typical in any time you talk about electricity. Uh, you must always be careful because your body could be that path of least resistance. So you always want to be careful about that. Electric current cannot flow through everything. Nope. Absolutely not. No way. There are some things that it can, like conductors. Conductors, they let electrons go through them easily, um, and they're very easy going. Mm -hmm. They just let electrons go through them easily. Very good. I said that before, right? Yeah. yeah. So if you think about it, the nucleus will is not really difficultly bonded, strongly bonded to the electrons. So the electrons can easily move away from one nucleus to the nucleus of another atom. Mm -hmm. Okay. But in, well, electrons and conductors, basically, like you just said, they're loosely bound mm -hmm. um, to their atoms, so they flow easily through the material. Um, and that's what causes electric current. And I really, see. I love this picture because you can see the little lines of the yellow arrows going through as the electrons are kind of jumping from one atom to the next and, and pushing and shoving each other uh, kind of through the line, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, that's right. Some examples, wire, spoon, metal, copper, aluminum, a lot of these things all have very similar properties that are A metal spoon, right? Metal spoon, yeah, not a yeah, plastic spoon. Yeah. That's different. How does electricity get so... To a lamp so fast. I mean, like, you know, I turn it on, next thing I know, it's, I mean, it's on. I don't even have to, I can't even count. Right. So the electrons are already there in the wire, okay? As soon as they are sitting there in the wire connected to those atoms, and there's just that little bit of push that the, uh, the battery or the power plant gives it, then those electrons are used to light up that lamp. That's right. Insulators? Insulators, Insulators a right. Different. Yeah, a little bit. They don't let electricity get flow through them very easily. I wonder why that is. Well, the electrons are bound tightly to their atoms. They do not move easily. So in a conductor, this electron could move from here to here and kind of flow through. But an insulator, that plus and minus are so tightly bonded that the atom actually won't let go of that electron. Yeah, it's insulator. So that's why. We have a rubber coating on wires so that you don't go grabbing the wire and getting shocked. So next time you're plugging something in, that's why you can plug it in without being shocked or electrocuted. Is because of that insulator around the rubber on the or plastic around the mm -hmm. plug is actually an insulator. So it's not letting electrons through it through you to get to the path of least resistance to the ground. So cool. That's a good thing. Here's a quick video. Check this out.
We have been learning about conductors and insulators in science class. Conductors allow electricity to flow through easily. Insulators do not allow electricity to flow through easily. Here we have a complete circuit. You can see that the light bulb is on. When we disconnect the circuit, the bulb turns off. When we bridge the connection using a conductor, the bulb will turn on. What about other materials? Once again, we start with an open circuit because our circuit is not complete. The bulb is off. When we bridge the connection using an insulator, the bulb stays off. Let's review. Conductors allow electricity to flow through easily. Insulators do not allow electricity to flow through easily. Remember, before you try any experiment at home, you should ask permission and get an adult to help you. See you next time. All right, so wrapping this up. Conductors, electric charges are free to move from place to place. Insulators? Uh, they're pretty much fixed in one place and they really can't move. Okay. And what we're trying to get you to understand is we're trying to get you to understand not only can you identify what a conductor and insulator is, but also explain why it is a conductor and an insulator based on its electron movement or not movement. Very cool. All there right. You go. See you next time. Until next time.